I welcome you back. I am the host of this segment. My name is Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and you have joined me for Moments of Reflection. We're in a series right now dealing with spiritual gifts, and we're coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We've dealt with chapter 1 and chapter 2, and we're going to uh, intermingle some of this, those things uh, as we deal with chap, uh, chapter 12, verse 3, rather. And so I want to start right in because we only have so much time and there's so much to uncover in this segment. The scripture says, uh, Paul writes to the Corinthians, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. I was asked a few questions. You know, sometimes I take um, text and I've been getting a lot of them and they were asking, why didn't I just dive right in to the unraveling of what's going on with the gifts? And I told them it's very important that we understand the context from which Paul is speaking. He doesn't just dive right in and start talking about the gifts, but first of all, he starts talking about now the resonance of the gifts, that these gifts are not just human charisma or natural or things that come as a result of us getting a degree and so forth and so on. These things are important. Education is important. But when we talk about the spiritual gifts of the church, many things have hampered us from developing these gifts to the point where it's almost as if the church has no power, almost as if the church has no understanding. And I think it's quite foolish when individuals begin to try to exercise faith for a condition when they have not gotten a word from God. Always remember, God is practical. The Holy Ghost is practical. Even though he's spiritual, his ways are not our ways, he still is very practical. There was a time when a plague of death had been unleashed in Israel, and no matter who was outside, no matter who did not take those provisions that God gave to them, they would perish even if they were under the banner of a Gentile born and a child of Abram. They had to prescribe or had to listen to those things that were prescribed in order for them to be saved. The prescription was put blood on the doorpost and everyone who is under the blood, everyone who stays there, death will pass over. And so there are situations in scripture that lead us to believe that God will at times warn us and move us into a stage of safety simply by following wisdom. Always remember, faith is not believing God for what you want him to, but faith is believing the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And so faith then is having confidence in God in accordance to his rhema. And sometimes rhema comes in many different forms. And so he says, Wherefore, I give you to understand. Understanding is very significant in uh, conglomerating or trying to amass the spiritual gifts. Understanding is very important because I think in so many cases we have frowned upon the gifts because people have not known how to navigate or to operate in them successfully. And this is why we have to realize that the church is not just a politically sound or a societal uh, organization that's simply politically correct. The church is a spiritual organism that is supernatural, and we are connected to a supernatural God, but yet we live in natural bodies, and therefore we have to be balanced in our approach, and we have to literally understand the dynamics of operating in the gifts, and if not, 
we're going to see a lot of error that will open doors to demonic powers and to Satan. And so he says, I give you to understand. This is a very important word because he's now talking about what happens as you receive the spiritual gifts, how to discern when somebody is not functioning under the diocese of the Holy Ghost. And we have to understand and not be shaken when people deny God because people who have no relationship with him and people who have not been saved, they don't understand because spiritual things, even the gifts, even the processes are spiritually perceived or discerned. And so Paul uses the term here, norizo, and it means to make known, subjectively to know, to certify, to declare, give to understand. And so Paul says, I give you to understand. He is now giving some rich advice. He's giving an educational opportunity. And so he's now teaching them specific things concerning the first stages in recognizing when a person is being motivated by a wrong spirit. He says that no man speaking by the Spirit of God will ever, and, and you have to hear this, no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And so this is very important because it gives us to understand why some people can't accept Jesus, why they fight him, why they tie in political and racial things to uh, break down the importance and the reality of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so he uses the word anathema, and it means a religious ban or excommunicated or an accursed thing. Why some people call Jesus uh, a weak savior. Some call him, um, and, and I'm not trying to be racial, but many people say that anyone who uh, of the black race who embraces Jesus is foolish because this was the ploy of Christianity to keep slaves in bondage. It was not the ploy of Christianity. It was the ploy of those who were disguised as being Christians, who had no Christian ethics at all. Because again, the scripture does not teach slavery as it was practiced in this country. And it literally said, if a man was to steal another man to impose slavery upon him, that he should die the death. And so we have so many people trying to interpret scriptures who really have no understanding of the text. And that's why the scripture is being skewed to fit their political and their social agenda. And so he says, no man that speaks by the Spirit will say vile things about Jesus. The Spirit testifies of Christ because it is the Spirit of Christ. And so to understand Christ and to understand his position in our lives, you have to have the Spirit. He says, unless you're born of the water and Spirit, you will not see the kingdom. You can understand kingdom principles. You can understand why the church does what it does. And even individuals in the church can lose sight of the truth and the leading and guiding of the word. And then he says, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. No man can say that he is the master. No man can say that he is the controller. No man can, can call him kurios, the Lord from heaven, except by the Holy Ghost. And so he indicates now again, now concerning spiritual gifts, they are operated, they are uh, initiated, and they are set into motion only when you have the Holy Spirit. Spiritual gifts call for us to have the Spirit. Without the Spirit, you won't understand the 
inner workings, the operations, how the system is set up, the modality of God and why he even gives gifts. Remember, the gifts, they are doran, they are doma, they are charisma, and there's several other gifts. But these three gifts, the scripture says that these gifts were given to the church to build them, to bring them into the fullness of the body of Christ so we would no longer be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. I do not prescribe that the gifts of the Spirit ceased with the apostles, because if that be the truth, then why is Paul writing about the gifts to the Corinthian church? He's giving them a lesson and an instruction on how to navigate through the gifts and the importance of the gifts and the protocol of the gifts. And so it indicates then that the gifts were still in the church, and I believe that the gifts are still here. The scripture tells us that only when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Again, I've said this in an earlier segment, you'll no longer need prophecy. You'll no longer need to be healed when Jesus returns. All of those things will be non-valid and void because now you will be translated into a glorified state and we won't have to lay hands on you. We won't have to cast demons out. We will have moved into a glorious age where Jesus becomes our all in all. We've run out of time, but I want you to remember that no man can call Jesus accursed if he has the Spirit or if he's under the unction of the Spirit, and no man can call him the Lord except by the Holy Ghost. He indicates we can't even come to the conceptualized understanding of who Jesus is unless we're being led and unless our minds are open to understand the leading and guiding of the Holy Ghost. We've run out of time. I'm your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and this has been Moments of Reflection. Always remember, God is in control. He's coming back again, and he's here to be an abiding comforter with you. God bless, and you have a wonderful day in the Holy Ghost.